This is kind of a long question, but somebody has a big problem here. Uh, the IRS sent me about 10 letters. After the first few, I didn't even open them anymore. I just got a certified letter, but haven't gone to the post office to pick it up because I'm afraid they'll arrest me. That's not going to happen. I'm, not to make light of it, but you don't have to be afraid. Uh, a friend had all his money taken out of his bank account by the IRS. I don't want to talk to him because I actually didn't pay the taxes I should have, didn't declare all my income. I don't want to go to prison. I'm going crazy. The IRS scares me to death. So, Sam, wh what does this taxpayer need to do? Uh, the first thing is that this taxpayer uh, needs to stop living in fear, so to speak. The IRS is not waiting at the post office to arrest one person. There's probably 20 million people in this country who have a, uh, a fairly serious tax issue, and the IRS isn't waiting at 20 million different post office locations to arrest people when they get the certified mail. Uh, but fear of the IRS is not an uncommon thing. It's actually very prevalent in society. I even had a case one time where the client refused to meet me in my office. He would call and tell me that he's downstairs, and then we'd walk to the back alley behind my office building, and that's where we'd have our office meetings because he was so afraid of the IRS. Kind of an unusual way to do business, but some people uh, you know, need that type of accommodation. In this case, what this taxpayer is talking about is that uh, they're in the collection process. The reason why they're receiving notices is because the IRS is, is sending them collection notices. And the IRS has to, set, has to send out a certain amount of notices at a, certain, at a certain time before they can take collection action. And the very last collection notice the IRS will send out, uh, most likely, will be a notice called a CP504 notice. And that does come via certified mail. And the IRS sends it out certified mail because Congress requires the IRS to send these notices out. And the IRS has to prove that they met the statutory notice requirement. And that's why they go certified mail. So if a taxpayer signs for a notice, then the IRS can prove that the taxpayer received the notice. Or if the IRS sends it off certified mail and the taxpayer refuses to pick it up, the IRS can prove that they, they put in reasonable efforts to, to send those notices out. Once a taxpayer is in the collection notice process, um, they just need to move forward uh, with their tax problem as though it's a collection issue. If all the returns are filed and the tax is assessed and they can't afford to pay it back, they need to approach the IRS and work out some sort of solution to their problem. Uh, and the solutions usually uh, involve some sort of installment arrangement or hardship status or, or, or offering compromise. If the tax isn't owed, uh, then they can go back and, and work for a reass. There's a variety of procedures to get a reassessment and get the IRS to, uh, to reconsider whether the underlying tax is correct. You know, Sam, uh, we, we get a lot of inquiries from people who they know they owe taxes. There's no question. They just flat don't have the money to pay it because the economy has dropped. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that, that hardship status, because uh, I'm thinking more than a few people are going to be in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. Hardship status is the equivalent of a $0 payment plan with the IRS. Basically, you're saying to the IRS that, that, that your situation has become so bad and so dire that you can't even cover your personal living expenses. And personal li living expenses are defined as uh, rent or housing expense, food, apparel, cleaning supplies, transportation expense, health expense, uh, current estimated tax payments, those types of life insurance, those type of expenses are considered necessary living expenses. So if a taxpayer is not earning enough money to cover those expenses, then the IRS must consider something called hardship status, which is a zero dollar payment plan, which means that the taxpayer's uh, collection or amount due to the IRS is being pulled out of the collection process and put basically onto the back burner where the IRS will send no more notices, will take no more collection action, and this hardship status can last for a period of years or even more. If the taxpayer then starts earning money again, uh, there is a triggering mechanism with the IRS where the case will be pulled back into collections and then the taxpayer has to move forward either on an installment agreement or some sort of settlement called an offer and compromise down the road. But that may not be triggered until the taxpayer's adjusted gross income on their tax return boosts up over, you know, forty five, fifty thousand dollars somewhere in that range. Well, you know, and, and, and any of these <clears throat> dramatic uh, issues with the IRS or dramatic solutions, uh, a taxpayer better be very, very sure that they're giving the IRS all the facts, all the figures, because chances are the IRS is going to know it anyway. Well, the IRS has a lot of uh, investigative ability on both sides of the equation in determining how much tax you owe and how they're going to collect the tax. They, have a, they, they subscribe to a lot of databases, uh, private databases, that they, that they can glean information out of. And they also have their own internal database. So they, 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 they can pull bank records, they can pull credit scores, they can pull all kinds of information on, on every taxpayer if they're looking to increase an assessment, meaning that they want to assert the tax 
taxpayer owes more tax than is reported on the tax return, or if the tax, they believe the taxpayer who actually owes money isn't paying enough, they have the ability to investigate what this taxpayer's expenses are and what their income is. So, yeah, so, so if a taxpayer is, is thinking, oh, gee, uh, I know I owe him $100,000, but I'll plead poverty, I'll, I'll do whatever I do, and, and that's not quite the facts. It's not a good idea to try to take that approach, because then you start getting into some fraud stuff. Well, yeah, but there are taxpayers who owe a lot, of, a lot of tax. There are taxpayers who owe hundreds of thousands of dollars that actually are destitute. And these taxpayers, like any other taxpayer, uh, could, be, uh, could, could qualify for hardship status. We have lots of cases where we see people who, who've been entrepreneurial and very successful, uh, their incomes plummeted to zero, and now they're on hardship status despite the fact that they have a mid-six-figure tax liability. That happens.